Hello and welcome to another recording for Stowe. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with my uh, microphone, but there was an update a couple of days ago and I cannot get the settings back to where they were. Um, it's a simple setting, so I don't know what's going on, but the sound might be a bit off for the next couple of videos while I try to tweak it, but I can't seem to fix it, so I'm sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to go on to the next and uh, last uh, mission for this uh, episode arc, Spectres, Night of the Comet. Why will you not speak? Okay. Okay. I am going to... Just move off to the side so we don't have the ships warping in and out. I don't know how to do that. Welcome to Josanna! There's no ships over here, so we shouldn't have had that warping effect. Okay. Nah, it's not going to talk. We've determined that the Davidians are using the triolic energy of Drifter's Comet to ease their entry into our fa uh, phase variants. That is the cause of all the incidents in the neutral zone. But it's worse than that. It's possible that given the amount of triolic and temporal energy in that comet, that the Nubians will be able to destabilize the area of space surrounding the comet enough that they will pull it and everything in this in, into their phase variance. In essence, they're trying to steal an entire sector. If the resulting effects into the surrounding space would make the destruction of Romulus look like a popping of a party favor. Not that they would even know what that is. The only thing we can do to stop it is destroy the comet before the Danubians can use it. It's not enough to do it in the present because the Davidians still, <coughs> sorry, would still have access in the 23rd century. When the comet moves past Rosona Station, we will have to destroy it there. You'll need a ship this time, so you can't use the Nubian portal to on the station. I can help you get to the past, but you'll need to follow my instructions. Good luck. And once again, once I do finish it, I will actually collect, pick up, pick up, every weapon. So I will actually redo this episode again. So we'll accept this. Everything we do is for the Empire. Now you speak. Okay. Not wrong one. Okay, so it's one, two, 13 system. I'm extremely bad at maneuvering through the, um, the rings, so I might have to bypass that and let them do it automatically. Okay, on our way there, should be too long. I am actually keeping everything I'm collecting from the episodes to show you exactly what you can get. Also, when I'm doing these, I will collect everything. I was gonna do this before the video, but I forgot. And we're not at the system just yet, but we're almost there. Okay. 0.7, I think it is. There we go. Okay. So I'm really bad at this, so this might take a while. You should feel privileged first. Very few people, actually. Okay. Incoming hail, Captain. Do you want to, me to put it in the main view screen? <clears throat> you should feel privileged first. Very few people ever get to see this system. Klingon intelligence has gone to a lot of trouble to keep it off the navigational charts. This star is ideal for what starship pilots call a slingshot. You may not have heard of the manoeuvre before. Maneuver because my organization has been working for decades to keep all knowledge of time travel technology secret. There's simply too much temptation to meddle in the past. It's better for the Empire if people believe that time travel is the stuff of hollow novels and Starfleet bo boasts. Uh, the best chance of getting back to the point in time where you need to be is to use the star's gravitation, gravity to accelerate your ship to such high speed that you'll be able to access the time continuum. I've taken the liberty of having the light speed 
breakaway calculators calculations added to your ship's database. You will need to hit this series of uh, points as you move around the star. After you make your approach, you should see a navigational beacon. Aim for it, and you will have the correct tra tra trajectory for the slingshot. This is a tricky maneuver first. If you don't hit the each point in the correct order and time, it won't work. Hope your helm offers up to the task. Oh god. One more thing before you start. I also added a hollow emitter to your vessel. You will you will appear to be a D7 loyal to the House of Juros with all of the appropriate access codes for the time period. I would have acquired a, an actual DC for you, but a D7 for you, but you will need your ship's modern firepower and shields to imp complete your mission. Don't alter the timeline any more than you have to. Destroy the comet and stop the Denivians. But other than that, try to stay out of trouble. I risk a great deal allowing you to undertake this mission without clicking on intelligence operatives on the bridge. Do not tr abuse my trust. Good luck and good hunting. We're ready to engage the hollow emitter and start our run around the star on your command, Captain. Okay, let's see. So as soon as you get through this, you'll actually go faster and faster, and there are a series of uh, points you have to hit. There you go. And like I said, I'm not very good at this. I don't think I've ever been able to do it on the first try. What the? I have never been able to do that. That's... <laughs> It must be the Jem'Hadar ship. Come on. Hmm. Captain, based on the decay of elements in the system, we have arrived approximately 150 years in the past. Income and hail, it's from a Federation Starship Constitution class. It has identified itself as the USS Reuben James. Putting it on screen now. Attention, unidentified ship. I am Commodore Jacob Ross in command of the USS Reuben James. We have been searching for a Klingon vessel reported to have attacked a colony in the Guie system. You fit the description of the ship we are looking for. Unless you can prove you are not, we will take immediate action. Captain, the Reuben James has closed the channel and weapons are charging. I would rather destroy this troublesome human and his ship, but Kermit warned us not to damage the timeline. However, we, he cannot be allowed to stop us from completing our mission. The wingmen are pretty good on this mission. <laughs> okay. Thought I just did. To any ships in range, please, we need help. I don't know what these things are, but they're all over the station. They're killing people. Please, you have to help us. Captain, the comet is approaching the station. Its hydraulic energy is making it easier for the Nibians to manifest. The people on the station don't have any way to fight them. We will have to help, or they will all die. Okay. Okay. 
get a lot of load. Okay. Captain, I'm reading multiple Davidian live signs. We will need to work quickly to clear the station of their presence. Oops, scan that first. But I don't think anyone here pre appreciated the Davians crushing their party. I'm detecting weapons fire, broken glass, and signs of a struggle. There's little trace of us. Oh, little threat to us, sir, but the Danivians could use the conflict as a cover. We should quell it and then continue our hunt. Carmen warned us warned against unnecessary bloodshed. Recommended we set weapons to stun to minimize possible damage to the timeline. One of these rooms is locked to the end, so I'm not sure if this is it. That one seems to be locked, so I'm going to have to do the other rooms first. Apparently I haven't finished in here. Oh, they're back in the um, control room where we started. That's right.
to stop us. We hunger. We must feed. Leave immediately, or I will amplify the time distortion and destroy this station. You will not survive. Hey, those things are holed up in the lounge, and they've got some of my customers in there with them. The door is barricaded, but a few hits with a phaser should take care of that. Get my people out of there! Tough one. Ooh, Scotty. Now this character, I believe, is voiced by the son of the actor. My, you're the funny looking one, aren't you? Thanks for the help, friend. What were those things? Uh, damn spirit snuck up on me. I noticed a spike in triadic energy, and I was working to adjust the station shields to compensate. I went to fetch a hyperspeller, and I was attacked. If you help me, I can finish my repairs before the triadic energy reaches lethal levels. By the way, you can call me Scotty. Okay, so we just follow him. Then we've got to uh, try to collect something and then work out a puzzle to collect it. Just as I suspected, the triolic energy is increasing. We'll be cooked like a haggis if we don't do something about it. There is a wee store on this station. The last who runs it, Cassidy, said they might be getting a supply of the new quantum flux regulators. The Mark II versions. If we had one of those regulators, I could modify the flux coordinating sensors and use them to modulate the shields protecting the station. That would buy us some time. Go find Cassidy. She'll know where they are. Okay. So now you've got to do a little puzzle to collect that piece of technology. I think once you've actually finished this mission, you can buy a particular drink from the bar as well. What were those things? They were floating, and, and one looked at me, and I, I felt so weak. And, and then... It, it lifted me up and oh it was horrible oh are you looking for something from the store a quantum what I, I i'm sorry i'm just too scared right now to think about selling anything i'm closing down until i get me wits about me maybe it would be best if i packed up and went back to sherman's planet i don't know I what can i do to help oh i don't know 
Maybe a nerve tonic would soothe me, a nice stiff one, you know? Can you get one for me? Okay. Now we gotta go back to Scotty. Actually, you gotta talk to the bartender first and then talk to Scotty. What can I get you? A nerve tonic? Almost every culture in the galaxy has nerve tonics. Most worlds have multiple variations, and everyone thinks that the one their grandmother made is better than all the rest. Look, I tend bar at a commerce station in the middle of one of this quadrant's busiest trade routes. It's my job to be able to make anything you want, but uh, you gotta be specific. I could make you 14,647 different nerve tonics, 18,397 if you're bowling it. So, uh, what kind do you want? Tell you what, one of the waitresses should be able to help you narrow down what kind of nerve tonic would be best. Talk to one of them, and then come back. I'm sure we can make exactly what you need. Well, I've changed it then. You are. First the lights go all strange, then these weird creatures show up, and worst of all, you're here picking fights with my best customers. Look at dear, brave, handsome Captain McQueen here. He could have been killed. You should be ashamed of yourself. About nerve tonics. Nerve tonics? How can I think about nerve tonics when my sweet Captain McQueen is injured? If you want to know about any sort of exotic beverage, go ask that drunken Scotsman. Uh, I mean, Lieutenant Commander Scott. He knows more about alcohol than anyone I've ever met. While you do that, I'm going to make my sweet friends all better. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was added because I don't remember ever talking to her before. But then again, memory is bad. Okay, now it's good to have a piece of paper and take notes. Did you get the quantum flux regulator? Do you know about nerve tonics? Nerve tonics? Ah, you don't look like you need one of those. These wee beasties are troublesome, but they're not as bad as a ship full of angry romulans. Now, I have been known to enjoy an occasional nip of scotch whiskey. That's the only nerve tonic you'll ever need. Why do you need to know about them? I'm looking for a nerve tonic for Cassidy. Oh, for Cassidy. Now that makes sense. She's a bonnie lass, that Cassidy, and more than willing to spend a little time with the right Starfleet officer, if you know what I mean. But she hasn't got the stomach for fighting. Is she all right? I hate for anything to happen to her. She's shaken up, but she'll be fine. Glad to hear it. Sounds like she needs something to take a wee bit of the edge off, and that happens to be one of my specialties, along with transwarp transporter technology and warp field mechanics. Cassidy's been meeting me every evening in the bar for a spot of cheer, but I've never seen her order a nerve tonic. Perhaps if I told you what she likes, you'll be able to figure out the right mix. The bartender will help you. What does Cassidy like to drink? I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy didn't like the salty taste of the Albion brandy, but she really enjoyed the fact that it was garnished with a drop of honey that floated on the top of the drink. Bah, garnish is getting in the way of a fine beverage, if you ask me. Can you imagine putting a wee piece of pineapple in a glass of 20-year-old single malt? It's preposterous. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. The only time I saw Cassidy ordering blood wine was when she was feeling under the weather. Poor lass. She liked that it was served warm, but she hated those blasted heavy metal mugs the Klingons use. And the potency of it was a bit much for her to handle. A girl like Cassidy needs something with a little less kick. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Zelay brought Cassidy a Denevian mead a few nights ago. Ugh, terribly sweet stuff, like drinking syrup. Cassie didn't like the cloying sweetness, and the wee bird broke out into highs because she was allergic to the fruit garnish. I'm not ordering any of that stuff again. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. So you have to see, uh, you only have to do this once, and then you can go back to the, um, or when you replay the mission, you can just go back to the uh, bartender and tell them what you want. Cassie and I got into a drinking contest with a Klingon one night, and we ended up drinking fire away. It's not as good as scotch, mind you, but it's better than drinking warp core coolant. The next morning, after she picked herself up off the floor, Cassidy told me that the fire wine was so spicy 
and she was afraid I'd have eaten a hole through her stomach. I had to send her to see Bones for a checkup. Also, she said that drinking from those shallow bowls made her feel like someone's pet targ. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Martinis aren't my cup of tea, as it were, but Cassidy seems to like them. She appreciates that a martini should be served as cold as possible, but since she nurses her drinks, the cold tends to dissipate, and she doesn't get the full effect. She's quite fond of those fancy stem glasses, though. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy really likes her Sumerian sunsets, mostly because of the sour taste. She hates that the drink is so weak, and has been trying to convince the bartender to add garnish to it to make the happy feeling last longer. But he won't, because then it wouldn't be a Sumerian sunset. Me, I say a drink is a drink. If the lady wants a garnish, give her one. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. Cassidy really likes a little pick-me-up of a drop of Gagarian whiskey. Well, she doesn't like the wee shot glasses or the silly paper umbrellas. Who ever heard of putting a wee paper umbrella in a glass of whiskey? It's sacrilege. If I ever go to Skagara, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Okay. I've seen Cassidy order these drinks. So once you get that list and uh, write it down, uh, if you replay the mission, you should only have to go back to the bartender, uh, talk to him, and then talk to him again. What can I get you? I need a drink. I'll need some more details before I can make a drink for you. If you need help figuring out what combination of ingredients you want, you should talk to one of the waitresses. That's what they're here for, after all. So, do you want it to be hot or cold? She likes a cold martini. What kind of flavor profile are you looking for? Spicy burnt holes. She didn't like sweet. She liked the sour taste. How strong do you want this drink to be? A little pick-me-up. How would you like this drink to be served? She liked the stem glass. And last but certainly not least, what kind of garnish would you like? A drop of honey. This should be all the info I need. I'll put the drink on the bar when I'm done. I'll put the bill on your tab. Thank you. Pick up glass. Now, if this isn't correct, you'll just have to go back to the bartender and change the ingredients. Do you have a drink for me? Try this. <laughs> this drink is too cold. Ah, oh, that's right. She lets it sit hot. Okay, let me try getting you a warm drink. Okay, I'll change it to cold, hot instead of cold. So she orders it cold, but it, she lets it sit till it warms up. What can I get you? I'll need some more detail. What kind of flavor profile? Are you? How strong do you want this drink to be? How would you like this drink to be? And last, but certainly, this should be all the... Oh, I didn't get the glass. Move too quick. Oh, shift isn't picking up that menu again. Do you have a drink for me? Oh, I love warm drinks. They're so relaxing. I'm glad you find the temperature pleasant. Oh, there's a lovely sour note to this drink. I feel so refreshed. So again, if you do miss something, she will actually go through the list of what she likes and you can just write that down as well. I'm glad you thought this would be right for you. Oh, there's just enough oomph to this drink to make it really stick with ya. I like that. You look like you could use a little pick-me-up. Oh, I love the style of this glass. It accentuates the flavor of the ingredients. Aesthetics are important. The right glass makes the right drink even better. Honey! No, not you. <laughs> the drink. <laughs> oh, that little bit of sweetness is just perfect. It adds the most delightful note to each sip. Okay. I'm glad even the last drop of the drink is making you happy. Ah, that is marvelous. Oh, I'm feeling much better now, thank you. Alrighty, what tool was it you needed? Oh, a quantum flux regulator mark II? I have one of those right here. Please, take it as a thank you. Cheers! Back to Scotty. And again, I think once you finish this mission, you can actually buy the nerve tonic activates the um, nerve tonic at the uh, bars. The right tool for the right job. I'll just like making the adjustments, but I don't know if I've got enough time. You can't change the laws of physics. 
The trionic energy levels keep rising, and since they're show, the blasted comet is to blame. Modulating the shields is not going to be enough. Something needs to be done about that comet if we're going to live to see the morning. Captain, the station is safe now, but we still need to deal with the comet in orbit. If the Nivians are able to harness its energy, then we will be able to they'll be able to pull most of the sector into their phase variants. Past present, it will all be disrupted. Okay. <clears throat> This is as close to the comet's directory we'll take to the Drizona station, Captain. We need to destroy the comet while it's still here. While we still have time. Sir, if a group of Klingon vessels have entered the system, the lead ship is hailing us, sir. Putting it on screen now. Ah, a ship from the house of Duras. I am Captain Bavat, son of Warat, and leader of my house. My brother died due to Duras' treachery. I will avenge his death with the destruction of a hundred Dura ships. Prepare to die. But that is part of another storyline in the future, so you'll actually meet the older version of him later on in the episodes. Captain, we can't afford to change the course of events any more than we have altered already. And we know that Captain Bavat survives this day. We'll need to attempt to disable his forces. He'll be calling for reinforcements. We need to destroy the comet and return to our time before we're overwhelmed. This quickly before the ships come in range. Okay. Okay, so this breaks up and then breaks up again, so it does actually take a bit of time to destroy it, and while you're destroying it, the actual enemy ships will um, repair themselves and attack again. Okay, the Klingon ships are attacking again, but my wingmen should be able to handle them for a while. See, having the Jem'Hadar ships is pretty good with the um, wingmen taking the brunt of the attack from the Klingon forces. You can focus more time on the comet and make the mission uh, last less time.
like you fire on that piece of rock. Okay, so we've finished this episode arc, so we get the accolade of Spectres. That did it, Captain. The remaining comet debris is too small to be a to be a threat. Now we just need to find a way to. One moment, sir. So detecting a temporal anomaly. It's forming inside the DV Tempest three one nine one six. If you are receiving this message, then you and your crew have completed your mission. Driven's comet is destroyed and the Davidians are no longer a threat to the Empire. I thank you for your service to Klingon intelligence. And, because I will never leave one of my people behind, I have found a way to assist you in return. When you last docked at Ganalda Station, I had some modifications made to your vessel. One of those is the addition of a Borg temporal node salvaged from a cube in the Patron Cluster. It's set to return you to our time. Congratulations on a job well done. Okay. Okay, let's report back. Kopla! Driffin's Comet is a memory. I'm sure a Federation scientist will do some meaningless study into its disappearance in the 23rd century. But, like so many of the minutia those explorers are so fascinated with, it will be of no consequence. What matters is that you acted to protect your empire. You did a warrior's duty. There is no greater reward than that. It would be best for the Empire to keep the details of what transpired here secret. Time travel is so troublesome. But while the Lore Singers will never tell the tale of your ship and the Comet, know that those in power recognize and appreciate your achievements. Go with honor, my friend. I will call on you again in the future, should the need arise. Okay, so... I'm not sure if I can collect this because I'm not a federation. I'll see. Everything okay. we do is for the Empire. Again, so that's the end of the episode. Let's just have a quick look at what we've collected. We've collected some more food. Some more food. Move those out of the way. That's the Federation Type uh, 3 phaser, which is part of the. Um, we've detected an anomaly in the Azure. It's part of the uh, reward system. Some more uh, kit modules, more food, kit module, personal shield, and minor components. This will uh, actually repair your ship. Let's see. Okay. Here, damaged. Repair. So my shields are damaged, so my shields aren't working at 100%, so let's see if I can repair that. Nope. A major component, so that's a minor component. Yeah. So that's for repairing your shields, uh, your ship, for any sort of damage. But to, if you're wondering where this damage comes from, if you don't have it, you go to your options. Just close this off. Okay options and basic and then you come down to difficulty and you can change that hang on why did it i don't remember turning it off so difficulty is now elite so when you go to elite you will actually take uh damage um your character can take damage in ground combat and your ship will take damage in um space combat i, I do believe your crew can also take damage but i must have deactivated it at some point Okay, so let's have a look. What else? So that's for 
repairing your ship. Okay, so you got hyper sprays, uh, power cells, shields, and this is for uh, healing your your characters, regenerators for your characters and uh, components for your ships. So you can see we collected quite a bit uh, uh, from uh, just this one mission. These are bridge officers that I have collected through um, duty officer assignments. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. Let's see, what can I do here? Again, I don't have any uh, a lot of ships for this. So that one, and still need a bit, so let's go to the small craft and get plus 10, and that's close enough. 45 and 20 is a high, so let's go for tactical, 30 and 20, 96, that's close. Okay, this one might be a bit harder to obtain. So when it comes to something like this, where you need a lot of science, but you don't have any science ships left, you use your science ships, you just want to go down and pretty much look at the very last one, which is 610, 16, 40. So 40 is the highest, so you probably stick with that one. You only need uh, 25. 16, 18, 30. Let's see if I get one that's 25 from engineering. 23, 27. Again, close enough, 99% possibility, and I've got one more. Hey, I'll go for this one, 45. There we go. Okay, and then let's have a look at this. Okay, so I've gotten, this is for your ship uh, devices. You put that in your uh, device sector. So down here, and then once you have that in your ship, you can I have to close this off. Activate a weapons platform, which just sits still in space. But if you fly close enough to it, it will attack the ships attacking you. So that's what these are for. And there are different types, different energy types. So they're always um, uh, useful, uh, especially in um, queued events where you have to protect a particular sector. You can just drop these every couple of set, uh, every minute or so you just drop one and it just helps give a bit more defense so if everyone in the fleet has something like this it will just help a little especially if you've got to protect a particular spot rather than flying around the map okay let's see what else will pop up okay now the bridge officer I oh, know commendation okay so because I got my marauding up past to level one I've actually got a marauding crew I can collect. So we'll just so I've got some experience points for up here, and then crew experience for training my crew. Accept that. Now if you have a look at the store, I have one token to buy one of these. Um, once you've bought them, you only get the one, but once you've bought them, you can actually pay uh, dilithium to get the rest. But again, um, I pick on the purple. I've just got the purple ones out of all of them. And again, once you have these high level characters, when you do duty officer assignments again, you'll get better uh, a better payout because you'll have a high level crew member doing it. Okay, what did I... Military. Again, some more experience. I can buy rank one officer. Congratulations on our first. Okay, just got another um, socialization point. Okay, so what's this? 13, 44, 21. Okay, again, you just want to go to your filters, show the ones that you can actually do, because you can see here a little uh, red triangle means I haven't got all the components necessary, so we'll just do that and that deletes that one. And then we'll just begin, wait for the, load, uh, the, the list to reload.
And of course, um, I'm not sure if you've just come here to watch Stowe, but this isn't a Star Trek Online channel, it's a gaming channel. So I am hoping to do other games. I do plan on doing a Fallout 76 playthrough, um, but whether or not that's actually going to happen, I can't say, because uh, I think you have to buy the game to start it, but after that it's free to play on the, online. But, uh, you know, bills and stuff, well, it's November, it's a couple of months away, so I should have the money about by then, but uh, heading towards the end of the year, I always have financial issues, so I'll see if I can afford it. Okay, so you get 20 in progress, that's what you can do. Four, so I actually um, got this upper level, past level three, so I actually unlocked one. But once I get three of them past level three, I can actually unlock another one, so I can actually get more done. So I might focus on these three next, because I'm up for level three, then once I get to that, there you go. Two. Okay, so Romulan to level three, then I can get the Federation to level five, the Romulan to level five, then the Federation to level 10, and then Romulan and either Klingon or Ferengi to level 10. So yeah, as you unlock certain levels, you do actually do get benefits from it. And um, as you can see, level three campaign and Gamma Recruit. So as long as this character itself gets to a level 10 in three of these, it unlocks another admirality option for the rest of your uh, characters. Okay, and I think, um, yeah, last time I did a playthrough of the missions over and over again, I did actually show you the benefits of what you'll actually receive. Um, and it was about 200,000 uh, energy credits approximation of what you could actually receive from selling your equipment on um, the exchange. So all of this here, can be sold on the exchange or well, pretty much everything except for these can be sold on the exchange um, but again I like to collect these and use them when I can because they are very useful in the game um, again if you look here 64 percent hit points over 3.5 seconds so it just uh, heals you if you eat it um, while playing ground combat so that's another thing to look at, is to have that in your device slot so that uh, you can actually repair your hit points so you don't um, die. If you look like you're about to die, just take a bite and you uh, just get a few more hit points and survive a little longer. As you can see, um, Klingon Guck is, uh, I've got five of them. I've got two of these and you can see that, uh, let's see, the green option is uh, uncommon. So you've got to get less of these than you are the white uh, common fields. And I think, I don't even have any blue or purple okay uh, with the bridge officers here you can see that it's a uh, blue which is a rare I don't actually activate blues I only keep purple um, bridge officers which are ultra rare uh, once I can afford it I will be going to no let's do that. where is this personnel uh, this is it here bridge officers so I will be coming here and getting my uh, Borg officer um, and the Ferrazen officer. So these are Federation, that's a Romulan. This is an officer you can buy for the Klingons. Klingons, that's a Federation officer. So you can see there's only two, but um, again, the Federation is the most common uh, focal point of the S series, so you're going to get a lot more of them. But uh, as you can see, I will get four. So for my tactical captain, I will get two tactical. One science and one engineering. For my engineering capping, I, I get two engineering, one tactical, and one science, and you know, so on and so forth. Um, with these, you you buy them, then you go to a bridge officer trading um, NPC, and they will sell you a bridge officer with a token you get from this, male or female. And again, I like to have. Uh, an equal amount, two males, two females. So the tactical will be one male, one female, and then the science and engineering, I'll just decide as I go. But um, yeah, let's have a look. Uh, what else do I need to look at? Um, so I need to get those. You only can get one bridge officer, one Borg officer. You can have as many of these as you like. Doesn't actually say, but I... Yeah, oh yeah, if you discard this um, in your crew, 
you can uh, create options, you can promote them or discharge them. If you discharge the uh, Borg officer, you'll have to spend 500 Zen on getting a new one. So just be very careful when doing this. Again, this is a purple, very rare bridge officer. Um, all of these are, so that's a, another thing to look at. Uh, bridge officer slots. You can see I've only got six, but I can actually buy this and probably, I think from the looks of it, I can probably double the amount of bridge officers I have because I think on my federation size officer, it actually goes straight past and I can scroll up and down the list. Um, now that I've finished Spectres, I can actually um, look at trying to get some bridge officers um, and calling them the Spectres, like the team of Spectres and have four of them and just give them the shields, the weapons or anything I've collected throughout the Spectre t uh, TV series, <laughs> the episode series. Um, then Vigilance, this will be a temporal uh, episode where you can collect a vessel from the past. Um, yesterday's war. Again, part of a temporal time. I don't see why they don't con um, converge these two to the. Actually, I think Vigilance is the Klingon variant of the Federation um, timeline, and then yesterday's uh, war is a cross faction type. Uh, cross-faction storyline cross-faction that's a Romulan thing so you again you want to find weapons that do Romulan damage to Romulan shields um, and also shields that will take Romulan damage so you've really got to uh, specialize your crew if you really want to try to get that um, this is uh, kind of a mixture of different um, attacks you've got to fight off but then there are uh, Romulans, Gorn, Norsicans, so it's probably a mixture of the Klingons and the Romulans in this one. Plus, there are some um, alien creatures you've got to fight off. Let's see. Again, this is a Reman Romulan attack. Obviously, Cardassian, uh, Jem'Hadar, Breen, Borg, which are a pain. Uh, New Romulus. This is just um, going to New Romulus and fixing things. You will be attacked by alien, uh, not alien, by alien animals, but that's very rare. Um, there are specific maps where you'll be attacked by particular things. Uh, this is... Um, oh, well, this whole thing here is a storyline that kind of continues one from the other, but they are separate storylines that merge into one by the end of the series. Um, species 8472... Uh, what are they called? I'm trying to think of their names, but I can't... Uh, anyway, a lot of Voyager stuff in these episodes. Uh, a lot of the, um, a lot of the Delta Quadrant. This is where the Delta, you can see the Delta Quadrant. This is where the Delta Quadrant comes into it. There are some alien species from the Delta Quadrant and other species not, um, seen but have been mentioned in the series. Okay. Um, any questions uh, you'd like to ask? Any sort of suggestions on how to, uh, Play through any um, particular things you'd like me to see uh, see a video on. Again, I, I do plan on doing a series of videos on star bases and what available at them. Only if that star base has a unique option where you can get a particular uh, piece of equipment or um, bridge officer. Um, what else? I guess um, while I'm playing the game, uh, I'll do a description of what's happening here in the Delta Quadrant, what each sector does, but um, that's a playthrough of the game itself. I don't see any point in going through every sector and telling you. Um, I think there's one star in each sector at least that is important to the, the game. And with most of these maps, you'll find at least one star base or star system you've got to visit within a sector. Um, here you've got Bajor, Deep Space Nine and Cadassia all kind of close together. So that's kind of why you probably wouldn't have anything else in this particular area. You've also got the um, the mineral mine, the lithium mine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll end this here. Um, again, any comments, I'm more than happy to take criticism, but I just ask that you keep it civil in the conversations below. Um, a lot of uh, kids do watch this, so I do want to try to keep it as friendly, uh, family friendly as possible. And I'll see you in the next video.